Hello fellow engineers and welcome back to Polybridge 3. Today we're going to be creating some of the world's most iconic bridges in Polybridge 3 and seeing how each one works and whether Polybridge 3 allows them to stand tall or fall like an architect. This episode we're looking at three iconic American bridges but for future bridges when your suggestions in the comments below. Okay so let's head into the sandbox and I haven't really touched the sandbox too much. I mean I did beat the world land speed record in here but I haven't actually built any bridges. So first off, we need a theme. So I think for this one, rocks will do. Yeah, that looks sort of where we want to be. Uh, but that span, it's only 12 meters long. So we need to expand it a long old way. Perhaps we can try and go for a 100 meter span. Ban, although it's not quite 100 meters and you'll see why in a second. So let's get building. For this first bridge, we're going to be needing the foundation, which is Polybridge 3's brand new material. And so essentially, I'm going to be splitting this span into three. So I think we probably want to do like that there. Then if we copy that over to this side, what square is it in? One, two, three, four, five. Gotta love the background grid. Makes things nice and easy. So there's our foundations. So that's where our bridge will actually come out of the water. Um, and this is going to be the biggest clue for what this bridge is going to be. I'm going to select the red steel material because essentially that's what this bridge is mostly made out of. So if the road is going to be like that level, I think we'll do that sort of thing and then just copy that up lots and lots of times. So next up, we actually need the road. So I'm going to use the line tool, but I'm going to do a slight bit of a curve. So we go from that point over to that point. We don't put that much of a curve in. We just want a very, very small one. So if we do something like that, and then this is going to be the world's longest. <laughs> I'm out of breath now. But that is our road in. Next up, I think I just want to copy this road down, actually. So we go down probably about that far. And then we don't actually want road on the bottom. We're going to be replacing that with steel, which could take some time. And then we're just going to want to cross brace all of these up. So I'm literally going to do that. And then I'll come back in the other direction. So it's a proper cross brace. So that's going to support the road, sort of. It sort of means the road has a bit more strength and it shouldn't snap. Of course, though, shouldn't is the key word here. I feel like this is a lot of bridge for Polybridge 3 to handle. And it's a very, very long span, 100 meters. But yeah, I'd imagine from now you've probably guessed that this is the Golden Gate Bridge. Really? Uh, which is a huge suspension bridge. Um, and I feel like, to be honest, I probably need to cross brace these as well. Because these pillars, they're going to be taking the entire weight of all that material you can see. So that looks pretty good. If I copy this, rotate it to the other side, then we're sort of nearly there. We just need to put the cable in. Now for the cable, this is this is the most essential part of a suspension bridge. Oh, really? Is that so? Because basically all the weight of the road beneath, it hangs from these cables. So if we go for something like that, then what we want to do, each of these nodes, we just want to draw straight up using the grid and then just connect like that. So basically you can see this road and truss is going to hang from the wire above. And this bit gets a bit tricky because we're sort of overlapping. So I think what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to... I'm just going to hang from the top pillar itself. But with those in, we can then join them all together. I'm going to try and use steel. I imagine this is just going to break completely. But uh, the actual bridge, it is cable. It's just like painted red. If we copy that to the other side, join them together, then you can sort of see how this is going to work. Because if you imagine all that weight in the middle, it's going to pull down on this wire above. Uh, but obviously at the moment, it's only connected to this tower. So the towers are just going to fall to the right. I mean, I can probably press play. So if we watch in super slow motion, you can see as the weight of the middle pulls down, it pulls the two towers inwards. Um, and that is because we are missing a fundamental part of this bridge, the other side. So what I'm going to try and do is grab this cable, copy it and shove it over this side. Yeah, now you can see with the curve how much higher it is. So instead, we'll draw this curve again. Now I've added an anchor point down there just to hold the cable in place. But uh, we basically just want to do what we did before. So we've drawn that. We just do the straight up cables to so go from the road straight up to where the wire meets. And we connect them with steel, which only just reaches. That's why I haven't used steel as the vertical cables, because they've got a length limit in this game. It looks like they just about work here. We'll probably have to... 
replace them with cable to get the actual strength. Assuming this will even work without turning on braking on. But yeah, let's copy all of that to the other side. Boosh. And then let's see how much of a disaster this is going to be. <laughs> oh yeah, no surprise there. Completely, completely fails. So if we watch this in slow motion with the stress on, you can sort of see... It's just so much weight coming down these cables. Because think about this, the entire bridge, all the road, all the cables, it's all coming down this force here, down this pier. And you can literally see that at the bottom. It just goes bright red. And then these bottom pieces just absolutely obliterate. I wonder actually, if I were to try and make these stronger by using like muscles, I imagine it will end up that all the pieces I'm going to need to replace with muscles, yeah, because that's the next one that's gone. So again, we'll muscle that. All right, so that, oh, that's working a lot better. The bottom, the bottom cross braces are then going. So what if we could make this even more muscly by doing that? So, oh, you can see the stress. It sort of went through, but then it survived. Okay, so where's the next broken piece? Oh, it's over there. What's it doing over there? I'll tell you what, let's just replace all of that section with what we've done over this side. But yeah, we're sort of at the point where you can see that road there just absolutely pops. And that might be because there's so much movement in this. So I'll tell you what, let's just delete this entire tower and then replace it with a new Mega Muscle version. Now it's worth noting the, the road under here, it's not actually connected to the pillars. Like the only way the road is connected to the pillars is through the cable on top. Yeah, but right, with those in, let's see, is that any better? Oh, it's definitely holding together a bit more, but uh, not a lot remains now. So what bro you broke down there. What are you doing breaking? Okay, so I made a little tweak down there. Let's see. Oh, this is getting close now. This is actually getting close. So what actually broke was just the road and a few little bits of steel. Okay, okay. I'll tell you what, I should probably disconnect that. Because essentially, bridges in real life, they have an expansion joint. Because bridges, they're designed to move. Like, if you try and make something rigid and it wants to move, it's going to break. If you allow it to move slightly, it will be a lot stronger. I think what's happening, this road is trying to stretch a little bit. So if that wasn't connected, if we just had our road going to like there, and then I just move it fairly close. You can do that, cable it up to the top, mirror that to the other side. And then I think the road's going to be less inclined to snap. Oh, God. <laughs> but uh, the rest of the bridge, uh, you, you could argue more so inclined to snap. If we go back to having these connected, I mean, there's so much movement in this bridge. <laughs> I'm not sure we're going to be able to do this. Uh, one other thing we are definitely missing on this bridge, it's the cross braces. That's probably making all the difference. Now, the only way to get cross braces in this game is to use road. But if we just road across all of these... Then suddenly we have a much more realistic looking bridge, except the road is still getting annihilated. Oh, and that extra weight has made everything break. Oh dear. <laughs> I should laugh. I'm an engineer. However, if I were to use my engineering brain, we can just come down to here, pick that, and then we should be able to add a load of vehicles as well as some boats and planes. And then we have the Golden Gate Bridge recreated in Poly Bridge 3. Yes, didn't quite work as intended, but uh, we were close. We got close, I think. So comparing it to the original, there we go. I'd say we did a pretty good job. Although one of the harder ones to get right in the game, no doubt. Anyway, for the next bridge, we start a brand new level again. We need to make this quite a big span. I think we'll just go 80 meters this time. Again, we want a curved road, but this one is a lot, lot taller. So we'll... Oh, what happened? Trace abort... What? What do you mean, trace aborted? I said... Oi! What's going on here? Boosh. Yes, it's working. Boosh to the end. Right, so that's all that done. And then how this bridge compares to the one before. This is a cable stayed bridge, which a lot of people get confused with a suspension bridge, but they're very, very different. And I'll show you why. So let's just find where the middle is. So I've just marked the middle there. All right, and then for this one, we're going to be using the foundation. Oh, which don't go tall enough. What if I bring the sea level up a little bit? Can I raise foundations then? No, okay, we're going to have to lower the bridge a little bit. Right, so for this one, the, the ends of the bridge are sort of on foundations. So we can literally just do that. Which should mean the majority of the bridge is very, very strong. And essentially our span just goes from there over to there. So it's a lot shorter. 
However, for this next section, we're going to need two foundations as close as they can go together. I guess sort of like that. And then we're going to have to build a pillar with this because we're, we're going to be doing a cable stayed bridge. All right, so we'll build the pillar and then I'll show you how a cable stayed bridge works compared to a suspension. So essentially, you have a pillar in the middle, which I haven't built yet. I'm going to have to build that afterwards because of how this game works. But essentially, the road is supported by going up to the cable. And you want to go sort of in a 45 degree angle. So if we just go from each bit of road up to where our pillar is going to be, then we end up with this. Then we can do like a straight across line just so we can mark out where the cables go on the opposite side. Essentially, we have that. We'll then just cross it up to make it a lot stronger. And then we take our cable from the pier down to the road, which means you end up with this sort of thing. And if you remember the suspension, that had a cable that sort of went along like that. And the road hung from that cable. On this one, we're connected directly to the pier. And the easiest way to explain how this works is by trimming it down. So imagine we've only got that bit. When we press play, you can see the cable is holding up the road on either side. So if we add another bit of road, we just stack the same thing on top. So when we press play, again, the, the road is just hanging from the cable. Ignore, ignore that guy. And so essentially, as long as this is symmetrical, as long as the weight on the right matches the weight on the left, then that is how a cable stayed bridge works. The cable helps the bridge stay in place. So now we just want to copy that mirror it onto the other side. And then we have our next bridge, Tampa Bay's Sunshine Skyway Bridge, the beautiful cable stayed bridge, allowing our police car to get to the other side. And if we turn the stress on while we watch this, let's slow the speed as well. You can see where all the force is. It's at the bottom because all the weight of the bridge, of the car, everything, it's coming down this pillar. And obviously, the lower down the pillar, the more weight there is from the, from the weight above. Uh, you can sort of see as well, can you see like that side goes red and then as the police car goes onto the other side, the other pillar goes redder. That just sort of shows how the weight is moving. So the pillar's moving left, then it's leaning right. That one's leaning left, then it's leaning right. Very small amounts of movement, but they do make a big difference when you're designing bridges. So that is two bridges that I've done. I've got one more for you. And this one could be one of my favorite bridges. I did actually build this in Polybridge 2. And if I remember correctly, it did actually work. So it'll be interesting to see whether it does work in Polybridge 3. But for this one, it's all about adding terrain because I'm trying to make a huge gorge. So essentially, we just duplicate terrain and then just keep going down like that. Then once we get to just over halfway, then we start making the, the drop a little bit shallower. So we want to go a bit wider than we are dropping down. So we end up with something like that. The question is, can I copy this to the other side and save a lot of time? Bum. Well, okay, I'll just move all these manually by hand. Right, and then we end up with something like this. And you can see school bus, he's got to get to school. <laughs> oh my goodness. I guess I'm being spontaneous. <laughs> but unfortunately river at the bottom. Hence, we need to build a massive bridge across here. So first off, let's grab my favorite tool, go across there. I feel like on this one, again, I do probably want a very, very small arch. So I reckon something like that will just push into place. And then we're going to be using steel for this because it's going to have to be a very, very strong bridge. Now, the road isn't going to be strong enough as it is. So like the Golden Gate, I'm going to have to truss underneath it. So I think if I just copy that, go straight down to there. And then, as before, replace the road with steel. We then want to add cross braces under here. So basically, we're just doing an under truss. So that's all that done. I will just cross brace. So we've got, we've got the force being spread along more axes. Then we copy that to the other side. Now, obviously, if we press play, that just collapses. But this is why this is one of my favorite American bridges. We're going to build a huge arch underneath to support the road above. So the best way of probably doing this is I think if we support every other beam. So I'm just marking these with a bit of steel. So one, two, three. I think this third one. If we go straight down, I think that's where our arch is going to start from. Same on this side. So let's just shove some anchors down. So I want one for that bit, probably there. One down there. And then this is going to be where the arch starts. So I'll probably need two down here. So I guess I'll do something like that. And then I'll do the same on this side. So then if I just delete all these markers, we should be able to draw our arch from that point over to that point. And then if we just raise it up, 
to like there. Oh, that is exciting me. That is exciting me. <laughs> now, before we build our arch, we're going to have to connect the, the bridge pieces to it. So I'm going to start from this side. I'm just going to do muscles from all of these down to the, the anchors that I just did. So you got those in place. To so go down to this one, you can see it's going to be way too tall. So we're going to have to use what I like to call mega muscles, which is essentially doing that sort of thing. Just allowing our muscle to reach. We should be able to go every other road and then connect vertically down to the arch. All right, nice. Then you can see our steel pieces. They won't actually reach across there. I mean, it will reach on that one, but it looks like we're going to have to go like every other and then truss this up in order for it to reach. So I'll just go to the middle of each one. Do the same down this side. We're marking with the cables. And we're drawing the top of the arch in steel. Then we can finally remove that. And then we should be able to get our arch in now. So if I go from there, how far roughly is it to that point? 0 0.63 meters, according to that. So what I reckon I'm going to do, I'm just going to come down at 0 0.63. 0 0.63. 0 0.63. I'm trying to be perpendicular to the arch. Right, then if I do another curve, and then I should be able to go through my markers to try and make it symmetrical. So something like that looks good. And then I think what I want to do, rather than going like straight down on every one like that sort of thing, I think I actually want to do like a truss to the middle. So I want to do that sort of thing and then just connect all of those together. I think this will be a lot stronger way of doing this. So after trussing all of this up, we end up with a massive arch like that. So all we need to do now is replace these marker cables with steel muscles and mega muscles, depending on how long they are. So down to that one. Oh, I think we can get away with just a muscle. So may as well just do a muscle because it will weigh less. So I think we'll just go along doing this. If we don't need a muscle, we'll just do vertical pieces like that. But then we end up with this. And now I haven't actually tweaked these. Like all these muscles are pretty, are pretty messy and stuff. But oh my God, it works. It works. Oh, stress is going up. Stress went to 99%, I'm pretty sure. Oh no, something popped down the bottom. But it worked. Okay, that was honestly really, really surprising. Let's uh, let's try and neaten this up a bit. All right, so that's made the bridge lighter. Is it as strong? Oh no, look that bit, that bit popped down there. I assume the same is going to happen on that side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if we watch this with the stress on, you can sort of see like the stress is the very bottom of the arch, and then as it goes over to the middle, it swaps to the other side. So yeah, it's just those bottom two pieces. So I reckon if we just replace those with muscles, then the new River Gorge Bridge is completed. And comparing it to the original, I've, I think I've done a pretty good job there. Considering it works legitimately as well. No unbreaking needed. Um, and it's an 80 meter span, remember? This thing is huge. So yeah, one of my favorite bridges in the world. Although not as well known as some of the more famous ones. Absolutely love this one. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. That was quite a different sort of video than our usual. Let me know what you thought in the comments. If you have suggestions for future bridges I should try and recreate, let me know in the comments. But for now, I'll say peace, love, and bridges. Bye, guys!